Well, good morning, everyone. In this morning's news, I want to remind others at the request of the Lord to evaluate your water storage situation. Do you have six weeks of water on hand? Six weeks worth. It's just a little sweet spot to be at right now. And if you count the number of days that Jackson, Mississippi has been without water or has been mandated to boil water, it should cause you some concern. And we have to be very strategic now. A community that is proactive and seeing the writing on the wall is a strong community, a resourceful community, and one that has the ability to thrive. So don't allow water contamination to bring your life to a screeching halt or bring you out of your home to be in line for hours to get a couple cases of water. You get the water now, friends. You be prepared now. Don't allow this controlled chaos to paralyze you with fear. Best prevention is learning from others' mistakes, right? And if you're a Christian, the best preparation is by spending quiet time in your prayer closet and finding out what it is exactly that the Lord wants you to do to be a good steward of what he has entrusted you with. So today I want to begin with a segment called The Hunger Games. And let me give you the overall plot of the movie if you've not seen it. And by the way, I am not promoting this movie. Um, I do believe that this is how the Beast Kingdom will come to reign through the destruction of everything that's precious to God's children, including basic resources like water and food and shelter. So we need to be as wise as the serpent so we can uh, try not to be like Esau. You know that story in the Bible about Esau? If you haven't read it, you need to study it. He sold his birthright for a simple bowl of soup. He gave it all the way. So don't go down the same path as Esau. The New World Order will try to get all citizens to submit and to take the mark of the beast. And the tipping point, I believe, could be desperation for water and food and shelter and the fear of starving. And then people will say, like, uncle, you know, I will take the mark for a cup of water. I'll take that mark for a bowl of soup. So they're being operated, they're being controlled by fear. This is a very serious warning, friends. Do not sell your salvation for a bowl of soup or a bottle of water. You have been warned in the Bible that it's coming and it is upon us. So please read Revelation chapter 13 and 14. And you will not go to heaven if you take the mark of the beast. The smoke of your torment will ascend forever in the presence of the Lord and in the presence of his holy angels. Now, here's the story plot of Hunger Games. The setting is... Okay, I'm going to set this up. It's a futuristic post-apocalyptic nation in North America of a highly advanced city called the capital. And it has 100% control over all the people. The people have no voice. And this society, it's far worse than a third world country. Now, the city is divided into, uh, or this nation is divided into 11 districts. And every year, one boy and one girl from the ages of 12 to 18 is chosen by a lottery. So their names just pop up in the lottery to compete in a televised battle to the death. And this story, I mean, very famous movie based off of a novel by Suzanne Collins in which, now these are her words. She said that she wrote this book and it was inspired by Greek mythology which we believe is true, Roman gladiator games, very violent, and reality TV. So, you know, the goal is make the poorest of poor fight to the bloody end so that the ultra-rich can be entertained. Oh, the rich, they were being very entertained in this movie and watching and listening through all sorts of hidden cameras as these kids, they just fought to the death. Now, technically there could only be one winner out of the 22 children chosen in the lottery. Pretty gruesome battle scenes, friends. So now listen, as the globalists are crushing the people like bugs and they're causing people's nests to get all stirred up, 
The globalists are creating more and more rules to crush the life out of, out of modern society. So it truly is a prison planet if you're not sold out to Jesus Christ. Only in living for him and in, in for his kingdom is there any promised relief down the road, friends. We need to be in Christ. We always have hope in Christ. So one of the plans of the enemy, uh, it could be to attack our water. Actually, it has been happening off and on because it's so essential to our survival. And most would not even see it coming. So a biological attack through our water supply or disruption of our water supply due to flooding, a water main break, tornadoes, tsunamis, like I said, structural damage to water pipes from earthquakes. And then we have a newer modern threat, cyber attacks. And that's because the infrastructure of our nation is online and, you know, very accessible to lone wolf cyber terrorists or other nations. They could attack our water systems online. Now, in today's broadcast, I want to take a look at some of the headlines that emphasize this main topic. All right. So here we go. I'm going to go back about 11 months ago. Here we go. Uh, climate and environmental injustice. Thousands without water in Jackson, Mississippi. Now, this is a current article, September 2nd. OB Curtis Water Treatment Plant was pushed to failure after the city experienced a high level of flooding due to heavy rainfall over the last week, following nearly 30 days of an ongoing boil advisory that has become common in Jackson. Now, its complete failure has left the city without enough safe water for people to use. Now, friends, this is a true water crisis in Mississippi, and it is still ongoing. So I want to just pray today that the Lord will continue to help those who are really uh, vulnerable, they're struggling to get drinking water, and even those who are requiring medical care. So keep Mississippi in your prayers. Okay, so in this next article, hackers keep targeting the U.S. water supply. This is from October of 2021, so it's referring back to February of 2021. Someone tried to poison a Florida city's water supply by hacking into its control system and dramatically increasing the amount of sodium hydroxide. Whoa, that's not a good chemical. You don't want to drink that. That's a very dangerous chemical, friends. It's a corrosive inhibitor, very dangerous, very carcinogenic too. So then uh, in 2020, a former employee at a Kansas water facility accessed and tampered with the controls remotely. They probably went down to McDonald's and went right into the water control system and started to uh, mess around with things. Friends, this is serious. And check out this next article. With Russia targeting the West, U.S. water systems on high alert. Yes. And the next article, 50,000 security disasters waiting to happen. The problem of America's water supplies. It says, if you could imagine a community center run by two old guys who are plumbers, that's your average water plant. One cyber security consultant said, that's kind of scary. I think we need full-fledged security guards at these water treatment plants. And then in the last article, it's a boil water advisory remains in effect despite some improvements in the E. coli uh, water test results. This is over in Baltimore City Department of Public Works on Monday. They had issued a water boil advisory. E. coli, they found E. coli in three water samples in West Baltimore. Now, two persons as of yesterday were being treated for gastrointestinal issues. It was not confirmed if it truly was from E. coli. I did see one lady was interviewed and she was very ill. But see, friends, officials are confident that the E. coli situation had nothing to do with the water treatment plant, but they still don't know how it spread. That causes me a little bit of concern. Now, E. coli, I'm a nurse, and I want to tell you a little bit about E. coli, friends, so you can have some 
wisdom on this. It's a bacteria. It lives in our intestines and most types of E. coli are not harmful, but some can cause diarrhea. Now, the worst type of E. coli, it can cause bloody diarrhea and it can become very serious and lead to kidney failure. And then that leads to death. So uh, the most vulnerable groups uh, to have issues with uh, potential E. coli are infants, newborns, infants, young children, uh, adults who have weakened immune systems, people who have chronic health problems. So you always want to have some bottled water on for the most vulnerable of your household first. Now I want to run through some of these signs and symptoms uh, a little bit more thoroughly in case you're wondering if you or a loved one could be affected. So if you um, have an issue with your water, uh, nausea, vomiting, severe abdominal cramping, watery or very bloody diarrhea, that's a red flag. Uh, fatigue, not just your regular fatigue, an increase in fatigue, or a fever, even just a low-grade fever. You want to go and seek medical attention if you're having any of these symptoms. Now, even though most E. coli infections, they resolve themselves without treatment in about five to 10 days, hey, don't play around with it, friends. Better to be safe than to be sorry. All right, so after an emergency or disaster, if you think there's any chance at all your water is unsafe, even the slightest risk, don't use that water to drink or wash your dishes with it, or brush your teeth, or wash and prepare food. Don't even wash your hands with it. Don't make ice with it. Don't make baby formula with it. Use bottled water, boiled water, or treated water for drinking and cooking and personal hygiene. And by all means, friends, follow the recommendations from your local health department for water usage. All right, now, do you know how long you're supposed to boil your water? Well, here's a few tips to consider if you don't have safe bottled water, and it's the surest method to kill disease-causing germs and viruses and bacteria and parasites. So if the water is cloudy, first, filter it through with a clean cloth. You could use a paper towel. You, if you have a coffee filter, or you can just let whatever sedimentations on there settle to the bottom of the container. Then draw off the clear water and bring that clear water to a rolling boil for one minute. Now, it's recommended that if you live at elevations above 6,500 feet, then you want to boil it for three full minutes, a rolling boil. Then let the boiled water cool and then store it in a clean sanitized container with a tight lid. Now, I'm also going to put a link in the description box of a lot of very helpful information on water purification tablets, water drops, filters, or using bleach. And this uh, little handout is from the CDC. It's one of the many reference guides out there to print and place in an easy to remember spot. You never know when you might need it. And just in case you weren't sure about this water, uh, water that's affected by radiation, friends, if you have any kind of radiation in your area, that water is never safe to drink. So I want you to pray over everything that you put in your body, be it your water, your food, uh, even the air that you breathe, any kind of uh, lotions or creams. Pray over everything. Listen, friends, we can ask God to bless it and he can supernaturally protect us, but we need to use common sense. Remember the apostle Paul, he was bitten by a snake and it didn't harm him. Uh, he sure walked in faith, didn't he? But we need to do our homework and we need to use common sense. And oh, one other tidbit, friends, don't throw away your glass jars, you know, if they're pretty good size or food grade plastic bottles. Sanitize them, fill them with clean water, and place them in your refrigerator as a part of your emergency water plan, especially if you're on a tight budget, okay? All right, well, I hope that this information has motivated you to take action and draw close to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the real star of this end time show. He's the real reason that the globalists are running around at warp speed, isn't he? And he's coming and he's going to be having 
his own halftime show. So friends, I'll talk to you again real soon. Have a wonderful afternoon. Good day.